So, so we are, let's get started. We are back now for our final session of this half day session, French Italian half day session. I'm very happy to, I'm delighted to introduce um, you to our speakers. Uh, and we will uh, uh, speak about good practices in the field of career development, valorization of PhD, uh, all about uh, uh, postdoctoral career and what we can do to help our PhD to prepare their next move and to uh, reorient your skill if they decide to decide or they have to move to other to non-academic context. So thank you very much. Thanks a million to our speakers uh, to join us. Professor, we like started with uh, Professor Biscari, Paolo Biscari, Dean of the of the Politecnico Milano, of the Doctoral School of the Politecnico of Milano. He is very committed. He is also member of the he is also part of uh, member of the steering committee of the Council of Doctoral Education. And one of our off, off topic is uh, career development, career tracking, the valorization of doctoral career, the promotion of doctoral career beyond uh, academia. And so we are really very grateful to, uh, to welcome to, 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 to that he joined us and is welcome. And we can and I leave you the floor to better explain what uh, what are you doing in the field as good practices in, in this field in Italy, because in France, uh, ABG uh, exists, has been working uh, for 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 the more, uh, about 40 years so you have a long year 41. experience and expertise 41 so we are not so experienced but we try to do our best for our phd students and graduates thank you professor biscan thank you okay thank you <clears throat> thank you lucia and uh, thank you also to the abg association which I really admire for the work that you do for the promotion of uh, PhDs and the doctoral and post also the postdoctoral careers. So it's uh, really, really useful, the, the work that you do. So it's a pleasure and an honor to be here. So uh, uh, as Lucia said, just uh, 20 seconds about myself. I am in, from Politecnico di Milano and here I, ha I am the head of the doctoral school. And besides of that, it's uh, I, something that I really want to tell you is that uh, in Europe, there's this really interesting association, EU, e EUA, European University Association, which uh, is, I would say, the common place for discussion of most, really almost all the European universities. And within this common space for discussion, there are several subtopics, which are the councils. One is the Council for Doctoral Education, UACD then. And uh, I have the pleasure of being part of the steering committee of this council. Uh, if you just Google EUA CDE, you will arrive to the website and you can be informed also on very interesting, uh, uh, very interesting <laughs> initiatives, including a couple of meetings every year, which is, by the way, the way in which most of us knew each other, including I, I knew Lucia in, in these uh, meetings. And uh, we have the opportunity, you have the opportunity of meeting all the people running the doctoral careers and the postdoctoral careers in several countries of Europe and obtaining the very different way, points of view, which is the most useful thing. Now let me come to the point of this discussion. The title of the contribution should be the valorization of PhD in Italy, but really I think we can say for what I will try to explain the valorization of the PhD in Europe. And my idea will be to try to stress how we are really facing some very important years, not only for Europe, not only for Italy. The, the importance of this is linked to the hashtag, we will say next generation EU. And this is such a great opportunity for rethinking how our society is structured in several different ways and several different areas. One of these particularly stressed in Italy, I have to say, is the importance of the doctoral career and the doctorate holders in 
providing innovation, not only for all academia, but for the whole society. So after years and years and years in which we universities some way complained, at least in Italy, that the PhD was not enough uh, understood even, that was treated as if it were only the first step to be in academia, that was only the young people wanted to do that only because it was fun. By the way, it is funny to do the PhD because in doing new research is such an exciting experience, which is certainly fun. But in the last years, something happened in Italy. I have to say that these European uh, centers and conferences where we discuss about the PhD were very important. We, you possibly may have already heard about uh, a very important discussion paper, position paper. It was, was called Innovative Doctoral Education for, I think, Science and Technology or something like that. There, if you look for innovative doctoral education, you will end up e very easily with that discussion paper. And in that, it was stressed how it was important to rethink the doctoral careers, in particular to open the mind of the doctoral candidates to new reality, new reality, including the industrial experience, including the interdisciplinary research, and including the intersectoral uh, association and interactions. Well, luckily enough, the Italian government took it very seriously, and they asked us to rethink our doctoral careers. And so after all, <coughs> We started, all the universities in Italy started a process in which, for example, we at Politecnico, but there are several other examples in, uh, in Italy, open what it is now called the executive PhD, so open the possibility for people already employed in the industry to take a moment to perform a PhD and to gain some boost in their own careers. This has proved to be a very important tool. But as I told you, this is a particular moment because in the if you go through the next generation EU papers, and in particular for Italian audience, the next generation IT Italian, which is known in Italy as PNRR, the Resilience and uh, Recovery and Resilience um, uh, National Plan, in it, it is stressed and it is, luckily enough, at last strongly founded. The doctoral careers are, uh, there, are uh, there is an impressive amount of funds for doctoral careers with the condition that they must be done in very strict cooperation with the external bodies, with industries, with associations, with institutions. And why is that? This is because this is twofold the explanation. One is that we don't, the, the country, we as a country, don't need an impressive number or more researchers in academia. Academia should need some more researchers, but not doubling the number, just to say. But the society needs to innovate. We want to tackle the green innovation. We want to tackle the digital transformation. And in order to attack properly with the right uh, uh, tools, these deep transformations that we want, that we are facing, and that we want to, uh, to, to perform in the next five to 10 years, we need to train people to, to, to know how to innovate. We need not only highly trained people who have studied a lot of courses and books, we need people who is able to invent new solutions, to find innovative responses for the problems, great impressive problems we are taking, and the European community on one side, and in particular Italy especially, have decided that the PhD is such a track. So they want to uh, do uh, all what is possible 
to include a great number of PhD holders in industries, in institutions, in associations, and whatever, to boost these two transformations and revolutions that we aim as a society to, uh, uh, to perform in the next, say, 10 years. So the main uh, take home message I would like to give you from my contribution is for one of the first times in my long career I, I have, I don't need to convince the political uh, makers that the PhD has a value and I don't need to, uh, to explain to everybody the value of the PhD because at last they understood it. So this is the moment to perform a PhD and to do the PhD looking around you, to try to connect yourself at best because the next revolution, the next generation is precisely the people presently performing or finishing a PhD. Thank you again for the opportunity. Thank you so much for such an insightful presentation and uh, um, about the situation in Italy and the need of our uh, society and innovation and innovation is made, is done by PhD, by, yeah, by early career researchers. Uh, that's why we decided to organize these events to open or to expand the horizon of our, of our PhD as attending uh, today's events to explain them that they, they are useful to, to our society for their benefit uh, for our society. Uh, the second, maybe we leave the question at the end of our this French Italian round table. Mm -hmm. And I will leave, I'm now going to leave the floor to Dario Pettenon, a Solombardo, uh, a Solombardo who um, he will explain quickly uh, the, the, the mission of our of Solombardo, the regional association of companies, uh, and uh, their, uh, all their good practices and programs uh, developed in the last years to, to help PhD prepare their postdoc, track their career, and they are working at regional level with the other, with the university, local university. And so they are really doing uh, really a very important work to, to connect uh, the academia and, uh, and companies and the world, of, and so then the world, non-academic context. Thank you, Dario. Thank you, Lucia, and thank you, EBG, for invitation to this beautiful uh, Congress. Uh, I'm going to tell you something, just a few words about my association, which is Asso Lombarda, and I'm going to uh, share my screen so that you can follow a track that I already prepared. Please tell me if you can see that and if it's uh, working. Thank you. Yes, we can um, see. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, Alson Marda is the largest Italian association of industries. It covers uh, four provinces, which are Milano, uh, Mons and Brianza, Lodi, and Pavia. And uh, the, the most part of uh, industries on these territories uh, belong to our association. We provide, uh, in fact, uh, lobbying support and services to our, uh, to our associated companies. And uh, uh, we provide, in fact, uh, uh, services about several fields. And uh, we are uh, a sort of, um, of a third uh, body which builds a relationship with the main territorial stakeholders so that we help uh, our companies to uh, interact with these stakeholders. And in particular, uh, concerning uh, the educational and the training field, we, are, we always try to promote projects with universities and companies to build a stronger relationship between the educational system and the employers where the employers are, uh, in fact, not just uh, the, um, the place where people are going to work, but even a, a, a real uh, subject, which can give uh, an added value to the educational system. And that's, uh, um, that's a point that we are trying to develop, in fact. Uh, this is the basis of our association. As you can see, we've got more than seven, I'm sorry, the slide is, uh, is in Italian, but 
um, more than uh, uh, 7,800 uh, companies, more than 400,000 uh, employees associated to our company. And you can see the, um, the distribution of the, of the companies. So um, the blue part is the made, made out of very, very small companies. And uh, in particular, the smallest companies are the ones that have more difficult and more difficulties to interact with the, the universities and with the educational uh, system, in fact. And we try to support them even, uh, uh, even in, this, in this sort of interaction. Uh, our main academic partners, of course, are the ones which uh, belong to our territory. And, is, and you can see them here with uh, all of them. We have been building in these uh, years, in these four years. In fact, all my, uh, at the moment, there are five years. A uh, strong relationship, uh, uh, which has uh, led us to uh, uh, a good amount of projects for uh, every uh, every level of studying. But in particular, in these uh, last four years, we have uh, dedicated our efforts to PhD students and PhD graduates. Uh, in particular, with Politecnico di Milano we, uh, and all the other universities, you can see here, we have been improving. Um, uh, a system of projects which uh, can be considered um, like a sort of opportunity to contribute to PhDs employability uh, outside the academia, not just in the academia because of uh, the data uh, that uh, just a few part of PhD graduates can in fact reach um, and achieve a career path in the academia. And so that we try to give them opportunities outside, in particular in the private, in the private, um, the private field with companies, and, uh, and uh, to valorize the PhD profiles in private companies by sensibilizing uh, companies about the added value that a PhD profile can give to their business, because uh, the competences, the skills that a PhD graduate has and can um, can apply. Uh, fundamental for a company which wants to uh, to lead on the uh, on the on the marketplace. So our effort, in particular, uh, consists in a permanent analysis uh, about uh, PhD courses funding, in, in particular on our territory. So all the universities that we have mentioned before, and about uh, private public scholarships. So when uh, uh, companies uh, fund uh, some of uh, of the PhD scholarships international relationships of uh, our, our, our universities and the employability of PhD students, well, we are PhD graduates. We have been developing a, a research uh, in these years, which we are uh, conducting still now. Uh, it's going to give some results that we are going to share with you for sure. Um, in the last two years, we have also conducted a more specific uh, field research focused on transferable skills as they are intended in PhD courses versus how they are intended by companies, in particular for PhD, for PhD candidates, so that we have been interviewing PhD schools referees, Paolo Biscari was one of them, and entrepreneurs on the other side. So our purpose was to, uh, to see the difference between the answer of academia and the answer of the companies, of the entrepreneurs, in order to see if what the, what the PhD graduates have got in terms of skills is uh, coherent what, with what companies, in fact, expect from them. The dialogue with companies show that the main fields uh, uh, where PhD are requested and where their profiles are real added value so that uh, what a PhD graduate can expect when he tries to apply uh, for a, a job outside the academia or outside the research world. Um, so in particular in private companies. And uh, at last, uh, the results uh, were used and were very useful for us to better track our training proposals. Because what I'm going to say uh, in a few moments is a, a sort of catalog of uh, training courses dedicated to graduate, uh, to PhD graduates in particular, PhD students, in order to, um, to build a stronger relationship between the training that they get when they are still at university and what they, uh, they, ask, they are asked to 
when they uh, apply in a company so that uh, <clears throat> the evidence of this research was a, a substantial analogy between the skills expected by the industry and the skills that the academy uh, develops in, the, in uh, its uh, PhD graduates. In particular, we have, we have developed in these uh, last four years some training courses. I'm going to tell you about the next edition, which is going to, uh, to start in uh, March, April. Uh, in particular, the catalog of laboratories has uh, uh, implemented in these years, and we have built four courses. The first one is effective communication, which is uh, a course which has been uh, confirmed for four years, which uh, works very well. Yeah, and we intended to help PhD students to talk about their research to their, and their, uh, the, results, the results of their research to different audiences and uh, uh, how to spread these results uh, to different audiences and so a sort of dissemination of research so that even company, uh, company professionals and people who are not of their field can understand them. Personal branding, which is the second course, Gives, tries to give some advices to PhD uh, graduates in order to valorize their uh, profiles once they get outside the academia and try to apply for jobs outside the academia or in particular in the uh, private uh, field uh, in an industrial panorama. And we try to give them some very specific uh, tools like how to build uh, an effective resume, how to write a cover letter, how to use the uh, social media in, an, uh, in a specific way, um, in particular for PhD graduates. A course about project management uh, on how uh, they should, on how PhD graduates should manage resources, time, data, because once they get outside the academia, they will, they will be asked to manage a whole pro project from the beginning to the end. In particular, companies are going to ask them to, to manage a whole project. So we try to give them some advices on how to manage it. And um, a team management course on how to manage a group, a group of work and uh, how to negotiate effectively. Because as we know, uh, a, graduate, a graduate PhD is asked to, uh, to lead uh, working groups because he's going to manage uh, groups and not to be a sort of um, part of the team uh, he's going to lead so he needs to be uh, ready for that and uh, the last one which is uh, uh, for the third year this year is a laboratory on entrepreneurial skills uh, it tries to give fun the skills which are considered to be fundamental to create a startup from the very beginning or to become a self-employed professional in particular uh, we are helped in this course by Find Your Doctor, which is the startup who already has uh, been uh, uh, talking today, in particular Evaratti. Um, they're very professional and they give us support in this, uh, in this project. Um, we have the, fund, the funding by Fontrigenti and Federmanager uh, for this course. And we think that it's, uh, it gives a very, uh, very good value to, to students because uh, when, uh, when a PhD, when a PhD graduate tries to uh, to become a uh, self-employed professional, if he starts from uh, some uh, entrepreneurial skills, he's more conscious about what he's going to afford. So um, we try to help them in this way. So this is uh, the panorama of uh, our uh, proposals for PhD students and graduates. Uh, as I as I was saying, we. Uh, we talk with universities of our, our territory, but we are very pleased to be here because Lucia Salto is uh, uh, has already uh, uh, involved us in, uh, in projects and we're going to be partner in, in the last one that I've just told. So uh, thank you. Thank you again for your, for your attention. Thank you uh, for your uh, very detailed presentation. And can you hear me? Okay, can you hear me? Because I have to move to another. And uh, um, so from the Italian uh, side, you see that uh, things are 
changing. Uh, university association are implementing projects, uh, are offering courses, or the the the, um, the program. Um, just Dario Petronone has just presented really a, a very important program to for the postdoc for, for postdoc preparation. So uh, we are trying to to put emphasis on postdoc. So, Doctoral career, uh, doctoral uh, path, and then postdoctoral path, and this kind of uh, these are really good practices because this kind of training is uh, essential for the next move. Uh, there is a question in the chat: Have you seen uh, that during this year that companies are more interested in hiring PhDs? Is there a significant relevant difference among fields, humanities, life, art sciences? Well, um, I can say that um, by speaking with uh, employers and HR managers, we have seen uh, an, uh, yeah, a growing interest in PhD profiles. And uh, right for those, for those positions which need uh, management, some management uh, skills, uh, some team management skills, project management skills, uh, where uh, there is a, a particular complexity in uh, the management of some uh, of some activities, because companies, in particular, great corporate companies, uh, not we are not talking about small and medium companies because they are still trying to understand the value of PhD of PhD profiles. But great corporate uh, companies underst uh, have understood the value, the added value of a PhD of a PhD graduate. Uh, in particular for high skilled and high level uh, profiles, high level uh, positions. So that I can tell you, yes. And about the fields, uh, we have seen that for sure, but this, uh, this, is, uh, um, this is real for even for graduates, uh, for uh, master degrees and uh, bachelor of degrees. Uh, the most requested ones are on uh, STEM, uh, um, STEM fields, so uh, science and technology, uh, engineering, uh, physics, uh, chemistry, and so on, because they are most, the most requ requested. Sometimes uh, and, uh, companies can't even uh, don't even understand the difference between a master of science and a PhD. So they just need uh, a person who is graduated in that field. Yes. Paolo, Paolo, please. May I? Yes. Uh, just to try to be a little bit optimistic, but I am relying on, relying on data, so it will be uh, an optimist based on some data. Uh, from our experience, the, um, the answer to the question will be in the last year, definitely yes. And let me give you only two numbers. We, we, we follow our, our graduates, both the graduates coming out of the master of science and the graduates coming out of the PhD. And we compare the same class. So for the same type of studies, it is better to have a, a master or a PhD, okay? Just to give you two numbers that come from our last study, when you go out of the master of science, only half in average of the graduates get a permanent contract. The other half get a temporary contract, okay? When you go out of the PhD, more than 90% get a permanent contract. That means that the contract is not the same, okay? And the second number is there's a stipend difference of plus 35% for the PhD. So that means that the companies are now understanding when they get, what they get as a bonus when they get the PhD. So uh, these numbers were not at all like that 10 years ago. So when people say, especially in Italy, you can read it still in the newspapers, the PhD is, is, is useless, they are not lying. They are only saying something that was true 10 years ago. <laughs> it is not necessarily true now. So relying on present data situation is better than we could expect. Thank you. To sum up what the Professor Biscuit has 
just explain. So these are really the benefits of a PhD because in terms of salary, in terms of a position, a better position and a permanent position. So the, a PhD is also protection uh, from unemployment, from uh, an, uh, I'm not sure, uh, uncertain career. So it is a, gives back. And if you want to work in an international company, you need especially it. those US based, but also UK based, you cannot arrive at a certain level nowadays if you don't have the PhD. It is simply that you don't arrive there. <laughs> it's necessary. So it's, yes, yes, we, we showcased it in our webinar run at the beginning of the year. There was um, our alumna, um, PhD in chemistry, who is now working at EMA, European Medical Agency in Amsterdam. And without the PhD, she couldn't have applied. Uh, have been able to apply. They in, before she was in London at IFA, and it was the same. They only hired PhD for that position. So without the, her PhD, she couldn't work in the field of regulatory affairs. This is really this is the reality now. And as usual, it will be like that also here only up some years later. But yes, yes, yes. but we, we are arriving. At that. We are arriving, yes. We are Yes, and let me introduce now the, I don't see, does, if there are other questions. Ah, yes, uh, Melik, I will, uh, um, I'm, let me now introduce Melik uh, Violet, head of the International Department of uh, Department of ABG, HR expert and uh, specialist. Uh, we have already been, we have already worked together, so I perfectly know all, all her projects. She's really an expert and uh, uh, she has surely something very interesting to tell us from the French side this time. Thank you, Melik. Thank you very much, Lucia. So I will just uh, share my screen. Uh, do you hear me correctly? Do you see yes, the yes, slides? Yes, yes, we can hear you and see. Um, yes, uh, there's just, um, I think that you don't see the whole slide. I'll just uh, try to fix this. Um, I'm sorry. It's still the, the same problem. And I, if I leave this like this, do you see well? Do you see now? Yes, okay. Uh, yes, yes. Yes. yes, thank you. Thank you very much uh, all. And uh, thank you for giving me the, the opportunity to give the last talk of this uh, intensive day. I will try to be quick. So I'm Melike Riolet, I'm uh, a PhD in sociology, and I'm the head of international department uh, at ABG. Uh, ABG, as you understood from, uh, from all the, the talks uh, today, it's an NGO uh, specialized in recruitment and career development of PhDs, uh, especially outside academia. Uh, so we have uh, three types of activities, uh, recruitment, uh, trainings and information. And uh, I would say this is our specificity because we pursue all these uh, three activities regularly and we are an association which is 40 years old and uh, we are a French association but in the last 10 years we have been uh, extremely active uh, in Europe and internationally. Uh, so, uh, just to uh, give you a hint of, of our mission, so this is um, a few statistics about the, the, the academic employment uh, worldwide uh, today. So, uh, this is not comparable data, uh, actually. Uh, for some countries, it's difficult to, uh, to find public information, uh, uh, to numbers uh, on, this, uh, on the, the academic employment. Uh, but this gives you an idea about the, the tendencies worldwide. So in, Fran in France, for example, we have uh, each year 15,000 uh, new PhDs for uh, less than 2,000 uh, entry positions uh, in public research and teaching. Uh, so sim we see similar tendencies uh, in other countries as well. And when you look at the, the right side of the, the slide, it's just because the numbers don't tell everything. Uh, it's just, uh, this is some qualitative 
uh, information. Uh, so we see what is the situation today. We see that uh, uh, academic employment is extremely competitive. Uh, there are more and more fixed term contracts, but at the same time, uh, in many countries, there are regulations which limit uh, the number of uh, the, the duration of fixed contracts uh, in the uh, public sector. So, for example, post for postdocs, this can uh, create a, an extremely uh, delicate situation. Uh, and we see also uh, increasing geographical mobility. This is a good thing, uh, actually. But this means also, uh, for some cases, lack of stability uh, because mobility is uh, uh, really important. So uh, it becomes uh, essential uh, as a postdoc, as an early career researcher to be uh, mobile, but also for the permanent positions, uh, you don't have the, for example, the luxury to, to choose. So uh, since it's very competitive, you need to, to, to go, be ready to, to go anywhere. So this is uh, where I'm coming to, uh, actually, uh, we are not trying to say that it's not, it's impossible to get a position in academia. Of course, uh, it's not, uh, it, it is not the case, uh, but it's really important for PhDs uh, to be aware of the situation and to, to prepare accordingly. Uh, so this means uh, especially having an, an important academic network. Uh, and especially for foreigners, since we are talking about international uh, researchers uh, today, uh, it's really important to get familiar with the codes. There was a question about the language. Uh, if you need to speak, for example, uh, French uh, to work in, in France. So the, the language will be uh, some uh, another important aspect. And you need to be really perseverant, try a few times. And this means uh, being sure of your motivations if you want to pursue in academia. Uh, and this means so being uh, working, really being sure of your career plan. So this is the, the alternative uh, career options for PhDs. It's not uh, an exhaustive list, uh, of course. Uh, research uh, PhDs who want to change uh, career paths uh, often think about research and development. This is the most obvious choice, but this is not the, the only uh, choice. There are um, several uh, research related, but non-research roles, let's say, in different kinds of uh, organizations. So in the uh, today we had a lot of company representatives, but um, uh, in the public sector, in international organizations, there's a place for PhDs as well. And ABG's mission is to support uh, PhDs willing to undertake this transition. So how is this transition possible? Uh, why are uh, why is the, the research experience, doctoral experience and postdoctoral experience, uh, why are these valuable for recruiters? So this is uh, some testimonials from, uh, from recruiters in our network, in ABG's network, who tell about why they are hiring PhDs. So uh, this is for technical skills, of course, for expertise, uh, but also cross-disciplinary skills, we, we mentioned them, uh, personal qualities also that the, the PhD experience and postdoc experience gives. Uh, PhD is also a vision, a different way of seeing problems, different way of approaching problems. That is something that, uh, that impresses a lot of uh, recruiters. Uh, and abil ability to find information, find skills that lack uh, ability to work in an open network. Uh, this is something that uh, usually it's not always the case, of course, but it, it can be something uh, that separates uh, someone with a PhD uh, from uh, someone with a master's degree or an engineer, for example. Uh, an international background, since we have many international researchers here, this, here, this is not to underestimate. Uh, personal and interpersonal skills uh, that the, uh, uh, an interna international research experience gives you. Uh, many We had many testimonials today, uh, but also knowledge of uh, research systems abroad, knowledge of uh, political, economic, regulatory contexts uh, in different countries, the international network. Uh, these will be also valuable for recruiters outside academia. 
and also, uh, of course, uh, a diploma that is universally recognized, but this is not the, the most uh, important part, let's say. Uh, so what does ABG do to support PhDs uh, for their job search? Uh, and also, of course, the employers who want to, to recruit PhDs. Uh, so I will I won't uh, get into the detail of all our activities because we don't have time. But basically, uh, we uh, on our website we propose uh, many job positions in France and also abroad uh, from our uh, international partners. Uh, so this could be, uh, as I said in the beginning, researcher positions, research and development positions, but also other positions like a consultant position, scientific writer, project manager uh, scientific, in scientific communication, etc. So uh, I really invite you, uh, PhD candidates and PhDs, to take a look at uh, these uh, positions, uh, not to, even if you are not apply, applying immediately, this gives you uh, extensive uh, knowledge of the, the, the job market. So what is available out there and what is uh, uh, what will be important, what will be the required skills, uh, qualities, etc. On our website, as I told you, uh, we also have uh, a lot of information. Uh, besides job op offers, we have also uh, information about mobility opportunities, for example, funding schemes, uh, testimonials of PhDs, testimonials of recruiters, uh, also advice articles. So uh, these are important resources for you. Uh, so do not hesitate to uh, look at them. Uh, and to, to conclude um, this evolution, uh, towards uh, the non-academic sector, of course, it's not without challenges, it's not automatic. Uh, we mentioned many common challenges, for example, uh, many PhDs are not aware of opportunities outside academia. Uh, they may have a hard time communicating their assets, like Dario uh, said it earlier. Uh, they may have limited access to professional support. This is the case of many postdocs, for example. There are uh, a lot of uh, support programs for, uh, for PhDs, PhD candidates uh, inside institutions, but postdocs may lack uh, this kind of support. Uh, and also for international PhDs, this can uh, bring also uh, a disadvantage, which could be uh, the lock lack of local network. So, uh, as ABG, we support uh, PhD candidates, PhDs, postdocs uh, through our trainings. So we give them tools, uh, we give them information to define their career plan, to tailor their communication, to practice their communication, and also for their applications and jo job search, of course. But also these trainings uh, bring them uh, the opportunity to discuss with their peers and also as we invite a lot of uh, professionals from different sectors also recruiters this is a chance to uh, talk to them talk to their peers and talk to professionals so here i give two examples of uh, upcoming events upcoming seminars uh, one is uh, for phd candidates and a cross-border seminar that we organize with the partners from luxembourg and germany in English uh, and on remote mode. And the other one will be in Paris uh, in French for the postdocs. Uh, so if you are interested, uh, again, I invite you to, to look at our website. And if, of course, if you are a research organization, a company uh, interested in organizing similar events, do not hesitate to contact us. Uh, thank you for your attention. I'd be happy to answer to your questions and also um, you may contact us further um, later. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Melik, for your last presentation. So I uh, I always recommend our PhD, we always recommend to, to, to visit your website. It is really very inspirational. Um, there are so many uh, different topics related to career development, your podcast, really, and it, it's always, there is always something new, your newsletter, it's really very helpful. 
and um, and then you they can also company can also post their their positions so it's really very useful uh, maybe I uh, I have a technical questions because um, uh, some PhD students are writing to my email they would like to have uh, your slides uh, do you agree if I if to sh if you can share your slide presentation and also Dario slide presentation um, so if you can send I can send you, a, okay, thank you. A, 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 another version. Mm -hmm. Yes, and so that I can spread it to... And of course, all information will be also available as a, okay. as a replay mm -hmm. afterwards. Yes. We will put it, uh, maybe we will publish everything on your website uh, uh, where you, uh, you prepare the page uh, for our... Uh, event, online event. And uh, this is the same question addressed to you, Malik. Uh, do you think that, uh, have you noticed that the industry uh, companies are hiring more PhD in France? Have you some, have you seen some trends in job offers for PhD that are published maybe to website? This is uh, um, in the chat, you see. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's extremely difficult to generalize, uh, but uh, generally speaking, we can we can say that um, the company's perception of PhDs has changed over years. So in um, several years ago, maybe uh, uh, there were cases of uh, PhDs who were trying to 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 hide this experience from uh, from their CV. Uh, when they were applying outside academia. Today, it's not the, the case. Many uh, companies are aware of the assets that uh, a PhD gives to a candidate. But also, of course, as I was saying, uh, it shouldn't be taken for granted. It will be always um, the, the candidate's job to, to, to present these assets to, to show how they are relevant for, for the company. Uh, for example, I see in the questions again a, a question in, uh, about the teaching experience, if it's, uh, if it's uh, relevant or not. Uh, it will be up, it, it, it will depend on how, how the candidate presents it. The teaching experience is extremely valuable, uh, but for a company, for example, this may uh, be seen as, as a resource, as, as an experience that brings uh, management qualities. Uh, communication uh, skills, uh, pedagogy, etc. So this will depend uh, on how the, the the candidate presents this experience and how uh, he or she demonstrates uh, the relevance with uh, companies, uh, companies, uh, the, the responsibilities that the company will uh, offer them. Thank you. Any other questions? Christina, can you see other, any other questions? I can see any other questions. No, I think that we took all questions. Yes. Yes, I think that uh, there are... Is teaching something... It's the last question. Is teaching something for what a PhD may be an asset? If I may, may I? Yes. Okay, thanks. Uh, if I may say, uh, teaching is a very important asset for a PhD. I always suggest to the PhDs to try to teach even small, a small modules if they can, because it provides you a different, a completely different skill with respect to working in research. And uh, because it's uh, transmitting the information, getting the feedback from the audience, understanding whether they are following you or not, so that will be helpful to you always because you will have to discuss and present your ideas in public, whatever your environment is. And if you did it in front of 80 people who are there, the students, you got trained in the battle, really. So you, it's a really a must. Then clearly, if you intend to pursue an academic career, it is certainly mandatory. 
But also, if you intend to go outside, I always suggest that speaking in public is not an easy thing. It's definitely not an easy thing. Understanding whether they are following you, they are not, they agree, they don't agree. Uh, reinforcing that skill will be helpful always, always. Yes, first public speaking, managing the audience, and but also uh, time management because it's not an easy thing to to teach while you are doing research at the same time. But this is not something that everyone is aware of. So the candidates need to explain it very with concrete uh, examples. With Absolutely. concrete examples. Absolutely. Yes, and effective public speaking is uh, another topic uh, of our training courses because public speaking is something difficult. You have to be trained uh, and teaching, by teaching you can learn it. And uh, it will be useful anyway, uh, either in, both if you stay in academia or if you move to other sector, public speaking is... Um, uh, and the uh, proof is that you can ask to any PhD candidate who got involved in teaching how different it was the second time from the first. <laughs> Completely another story. Because the second time always goes much, much better. You have to, to be trained and, and you have to practice. You have to practice and practice again. So if there are any other questions, maybe if you agree, we can uh, conclude our uh, event, online event. We hope hopefully we will, uh, it will be, I'm sure it will be helpful because all speaker presentation, all the tips uh, were useful, inspirational for our audience. Uh, we are very grateful for all uh, PhD students, all PhD students and PhD graduates and early career researchers uh, joined us today. I know that they are coming from uh, all over Europe uh, in the end, so and, uh, we will send them uh, slide Thank you for the invitation. <laughs> It and we are, uh, they can contact us. We leave uh, our, our email is in the contact email is in the program. Uh, it will be on our website, on the ABG website, so that we can uh, keep in touch. And so I, and I'm also very happy of this uh, initial French Italian joint discussion on the same topic. So we are all concentrating on the same topic. Uh, maybe there are some different perspectives, but uh, uh, the concern is common and the effort also is I think is relevant in, in both countries to uh, to valorize uh, early career researchers and to, to try to make aware uh, society of the importance of, uh, of our uh, PhD graduates and of the benefits for society of their uh, knowledge and skills. So thank you very much, and I leave the floor to Christina. Yeah, really a warm thank to, to all speakers for their insights, to, to representatives from, uh, from the academy, um, companies, and PhD holders that have been here with us today. Um, and uh, so from the ABG, the University of Turin and the Frank Italian University who pushed us um, to organize this event. A very warm thank to all participants. And uh, good luck in your professional projects between France and Italy or mm -hmm. even further than that. We have to attract more, more French uh, doctoral students to, to Italy. We have lots of co to tell, but from Italy toward France. And we, I noticed it's not the same. So not so many are coming to Italy. We have to try to bring more uh, PhD students uh, French from, from French university to Italian university. The, the French wine is better. <laughs> yes. <laughs> French wine is excellent. Okay. On this great note, <laughs> we thank you and we're saying you goodbye. Bye bye. bye. Thank, thank you, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Good evening.